We have zero leads. This morning, the search for a man accused of killing five of his neighbors, including a nine-year-old child, is growing more urgent by the minute. Is there any danger to the community right now? There's always a danger when you've got a guy that's just shot five people in the head, execution style. Five people were shot and killed by their neighbor in Cleveland, Texas, and the shooter who used an AR-15 style rifle is still out on the loose. Authorities are still looking for him. He is a Mexican national, which leads some to believe that he has fled the country, although there is no confirmation of that at this moment. Now, some more information about the massacre and the tragic events that took place. The shooting happened after the neighbors asked the suspect, a 38 year old man by the name of Francisco Oropeza, to stop shooting his gun in the yard. Okay, so here are some more details about how it all started and what transpired afterwards. The shooting happened Friday night after the father and husband of two of the victims, Wilson Garcia, says that he, along with two other men, approached Francisco Oropeza and asked him to stop shooting his weapon so close to their property because their baby was sleeping. Garcia says they called 911 five times to report Oropeza shooting his gun. The suspect then allegedly approached the house with his rifle about 10 to 20 minutes after the encounter. From there, the home turned into a scene of carnage that left four adults and Garcia's nine-year-old son, Daniel, all shot dead. So I wanna name the victims here, the people who died as a result of this heinous shooting. Sonia Argentina Guzman, 25 years old. Diana Velasquez Alvarado, 21 years old. Julissa Molina Rivera, 31 years old. Jose Jonathan Cesares, 18 years old. And then of course the youngest victim, Danielle Enrique Lasso Guzman, nine years old. Some outlets reported that the youngest victim was eight, but the father of the victim clarified that he actually turned nine in January. One of the most horrific details of the story involved three minors who were located uninjured, but they were covered in blood. They were transported to a local hospital. Two of the female victims who were found dead in the bedroom were actually laying on top of two of the surviving children, indicating that they acted as human shields to protect the kids. I have more details on the story, including the Texas governor's disgusting tweet about this situation. Before we get to that, Cenk. So uh, there's a couple of issues here. Uh, we're gonna get to Republicans trying to take advantage of this uh, mass shooting, which is disgusting. Uh, but first on the guns. Um, in the old days, this would have led to a fight, okay? It, the, the woman on the porch uh, said to her husband, it's okay, go inside, I'm a woman, he's not going to shoot. And in the old days, this guy being the monster that he is would have come and punched that woman in the face and it would have been a horrific fight, etc. But five people would still be alive today. But now every deranged person has a weapon. Every drunk person has a weapon. Every person on drugs, I have no idea if he was on drugs, but it's kind of rash action sometimes human beings take on drugs, right? They all have weapons. So they're not gonna come over and do something stupid like punch you, they're gonna come over and murder you. And so, good luck America, there's no one in government who's ever gonna do anything about it. In fact, that's why Abbott was trying to distract you with the immigration issue instead of the gun violence issue. But there's an unhinged neighbor next to you who probably has a weapon. And so now you can't even communicate with anyone, make the most reasonable request of all time. Hey, can you please stop shooting in the front yard? Because we have a baby that can't sleep, let alone the fact that you're shooting in the front yard. No, that'll get you murdered today in America. This place is absolutely nuts and our leaders are even more crazy because they're never gonna do anything about it. It's amazing. So the sheriff, Greg Capers, I'm sorry, Cappers has said that you know, he believes that the shooter was likely intoxicated at the time that he committed the shooting. Um, just a few more details I wanna to get to. As I mentioned earlier, the shooter is still at large. So the authorities are looking for him. There are 200 law enforcement officers in Texas still searching for him. They're using 
uh, canines, they're using drones, and so far their efforts have failed. We've got more on that. Let's take a look. Late Saturday night, investigators were saying that they had found the suspect's clothing and a cell phone that had been discarded. They also said they believe that the suspect has communicated with friends a couple of times. Whether or not, whether or not that has continued, we don't know at this point. But they are saying this morning and yesterday afternoon that the trail has gone cold. They wow. can't really say if they believe he's still in the area or perhaps somewhere else in the state. Now, the father of you know the victims spoke to the press and talked about the number of times he called the authorities. There isn't enough clarity to give you details on that yet, but he says that he called repeatedly. And I wanna know how long did it take for the authorities to show up? What was their response? How many times did you know did they get that call for help? There's just a lot of a detail that's missing in the reporting right now and I'm sure we'll fill you guys in as we learn more. Go ahead, Jake. So real quick to fill you in on that, the father says they called five times. and But they are 15 minutes outside of town and it's only a town of 8,000 people, so it's a small town. So that's why it's really open. We don't know yet what really happened. Because it's possible that they got those five calls back to back and it took them 14 minutes to get out there. It's also possible that they didn't hurry out there. Maybe because of the immigration situation of these folks, but that's not fair to the cops because we really, really don't know. And the cops are really pissed about this, and they're not taking it lightly at all. And they're, I think, they're like 200 person manhunt right now. Right, exactly. 200 law enforcement officers in Texas are looking for this guy. Now, more on the shooter. So uh, he has been deported, as I mentioned. He's a Mexican national. He has been deported at least four times by ICE since 2009, and I'm guessing that is the detail of the story that the right is kind of exploiting for their own political purposes. Before we get to that though, I do want to read Texas Governor Greg Abbott's statement about this on Twitter, where he wrote, I've announced a $50,000 reward for information on the criminal who killed five illegal immigrants Friday. Also directed Operation Lone Star to be on the lookout. Anyway, I read the relevant part of that tweet, which is for some reason, the governor of Texas felt the need to label the victims of this horrendous, horrific shooting as illegal immigrants. There's evidence contrary to what he's saying there, at least one of the victims is not an illegal immigrant or here in undocumented status, I should say. Why is that relevant? I mean, it's just such a strange thing for him to include in the context of you know, releasing a statement about this story and about this tragic event. And it's yeah. about the victims too, it's not about the, the perpetrator yeah. here. So two things about that, and we have breaking news on it right now. But, but first, look, if he says that about the guy who did the shootings, I get it. That's one of the issues here. He's deported four times, he comes back in a fifth time and then does this horrific murder, right? So, and that is super frustrating to everybody. But note, by the way, apparently there aren't open borders because he was deported four times. It's not like they're like, oh, just stay, take a seat. It's totally legal. No, it's illegal. They kicked him out of the country four different times. Sometimes you have a repeat offender and there's nothing you could do about it and it drives the cops crazy. In this case, the border agents, etc., right? But why are you talking about the, the immigration status of the victims? The victims. So there's only a couple of explanations here. One is they just think that their base is so vicious that they're gonna look at that and go, you know what? They shouldn't have been here anyway. It's not that big a deal. They were all illegal immigrants. Man, if that's what they intended, they're even more immoral than I imagined. Jesus. But when I saw it in the morning, I thought, no, somebody overstepped here. It's some look. The governors don't write this stuff, right? The governor does send it, so he's responsible. But somebody was probably thinking, like, oh, we want to distract from the gun issue. We all hate undocumented immigrants, or meaning all as in all the Republicans do. So we'll just direct it in that way. But this morning, I said, I this is a bridge too far. Like even Republican voters are going to say, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, we don't like undocumented. Maybe half of them, but some portion of Republican voters are going to go, no, don't blame these victims. Are you nuts? Right? So the breaking news is Greg Abbott just released a statement walking it back. And that's because it was a bridge too far, even for Republican voters. So let me read that to you. He says, 
or the statement says, um, following the horrific shooting on Friday night, federal officials provide the state of Texas information on the criminal and the victims, including that they were in the country illegally. We've since learned that at least one of the victims may have been in the United States legally. We regret if the information was incorrect and detracted from the important goal of finding and arresting the criminal. So they realize <laughs> they screwed up. Yeah, but I mean, so it does turn out that one of the victims is a permanent US resident, right? So they're correcting that because I'm sure all the backlash that the governor has received keeps mentioning that point. I just, and then of course, whether it's members of the press or other people on Twitter, activists, whatever, they're like debating Abbott, right? Based on that framing, like, oh yeah, well, at least one of them was actually here legally. Doesn't matter. These it are doesn't humans. Matter. These are yeah. humans. These are humans. These are human beings. Okay. Two of the women who were shot to death with an AR-15 style rifle were found with their bodies on top of the surviving children. They shielded the children with their own bodies. They died saving those kids. I don't care what their freaking immigration status is. Period. Oh, Hundred percent. What kind of a monster knows their immigration status? Are you insane? And those women, one of them, by the way, pushed out the father from a window, say, according to the father, saying, "You got to stay alive because the mother is dead and there's two young kids. There's a two and a half year yes. old and a, and a kid that was a couple of months old." So Wilson Garcia, who is the father of the murdered nine year old boy, spoke to reporters. I actually want to go to his video if you don't mind, Jake. Let's yeah. take a look. Now telling NBC News his son died because he was trying to protect his mom, saying that the child saw her fall and ran toward her. Garcia says one of the women who was killed urged him to flee out of the window so his two other children would not lose both of their parents that night. That was my nine-year-old son and my wife too, and two people who died protecting my two and a half-year-old daughter. My one and a half month old son was protected with a lot of clothes, so the killer wouldn't kill him too. Yeah, but what was their documented status? I mean, I can't imagine anyone's brain working that way, but those people exist, right? Whether it was Greg Abbott himself or someone in his staff who overstepped and put that tweet out. I can't believe that that was top of mind for them as they hear the details of this, this heinous crime, this horrible shooting. Yeah, and one one more thing for me on this. They're so desperate to protect gun manufacturers that they'll do anything. I think that was the main genesis of that tweet. They'll do anything to distract you. Oh, It was a trans person this time, it must not be the guns, even though 99% of the time it's not a trans person, it must be the trans person. Oh, It's undocumented immigrants that were the victims, it must not be the guns. Are you insane? But people fall for it. Like I said, this one was way too far. They must have gotten blowback, not from Democrats who they couldn't care less about or independents, but from their own base for them to go, oh, okay, I guess you guys aren't as vicious as Republican leaders are. Because Republican leaders would do anything to cover up their corruption and the bribery and the bribes that they get from the NRA and gun manufacturers. Guys, we have so many guns in this country. These mass shootings are never ever going to stop unless we just Vote out all the bums, and in this case, it's a rare, rare case where it's just Republicans. Most of the time, Republicans and Democrats work together on corporate issues to screw us all. But on gun issues, and it used to be that way too, now it's only Republicans. And they say we don't, we care a lot more about the checks we cash from the NRA than we do about your kids. Don't care about them at all. You know how many mass shootings there have already been in four months this year? 184. I mean, you have Christy Nome, Governor Christy Nome, going to the NR annual NRA conference to brag about arming her two year old granddaughter, I think, or was yeah. it daughter? Yeah, granddaughter with two weapons, two year old. And I don't I know. I think one of them was a shotgun. Yeah. Uh, because look, the Republican leaders have become totally and utterly deranged. I mean, what kind of a literal psychotic person says, I gave my two year old granddaughter a shotgun? <laughs> or whatever freaking gun that she was bragging about her two year old having. No, literally, you should be locked up in a mental asylum, totally with one of those straitjackets. Instead, she's a, she's a governor of one of our states. Insane. You have other lunatics like Lauren Boebert uh, posing with uh, guns, 
uh, and their Christmas albums. There's tons of Republican congressmen, congressmen doing that. Now they think it's so cool. Look, these are the weapons used to murder your children. Let's take a Christmas picture. By the way, I'll give my kids, tiny little kids, yep. the same assault weapons in the Christmas picture. No, if you believe that that is safe, you are psychotic. It is not a political debate. Go get mental health counseling. You desperately need it.